Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Bill Flanagan, and I'm the President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Alberta. And I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on Treaty 6 territory, and the University of Alberta respects the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. And I'd like to begin by uh, recognizing the Honorable Tyler Shandro, Minister of Labor and Immigration. Welcome, Minister Shandro, and to everyone at the University of Alberta. We are gathered today at the Edmonton Clinic Health Academy, a state-of-the-art facility where scholars from across the health sciences collaborate to advance the well-being of all Albertans. Students, facilities, and clinicians work side by side to bring health innovations to patients faster. Several of those researchers are with us here today. And addressing issues of mental health is a growing and urgent research priority. Depression, one of the most common aspects of mental illness, is a leading cause of disability worldwide, according to the World Health Organization. Mental health issues disrupt families, fracture workplaces, and reduce life expectancy. We know that mental health has an outsized impact on certain professions. We also know that mental health is treatable, as are other illnesses and diseases. The key is research and innovation. And working with partners in the community, in government, and in other institutions, the University of Alberta researchers are finding new ways to treat mental health illnesses among many groups of people, ensuring a brighter future for all Albertans. Making these discoveries would not be possible without the support from the province. As our vital partner, the Government of Alberta is making investments in research that continues to make us a leader in health innovations. We look forward to continuing to work together as we uh, to look forward to recovery and growth across our province. It is now my great pleasure to invite the Honourable Tyler Shandro, Minister of Labour and Immigration, to the podium. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for that introduction. Great to, to be back here at the U of A. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, great to be here in particular to, to highlight the remarkable research that's underway to support first responders' mental health. And without a doubt, Alberta has faced its, uh, its fair share of challenges over the past few years. The crippling impact of the pandemic, the energy price collapse, as well as the worldwide recession and this has all been felt across our province and more so with our first responders. These heroes have bravely shown, um, shown up every day to report to duty to serve Albertans throughout this pandemic. And every day, first responders take tremendous risks to help keep us safe. There's no higher form of public service than to risk one's life and health to maintain public safety. When most people hear fire, they run the other way. When most people come across a, danger, uh, a dangerous situation, they get as far away as possible. Most people would rather be anywhere else than at a major accident scene. But our firefighters, our police officers, our paramedics, sheriffs, corrections officers, and emergency healthcare workers have, are made of sterner stuff. They run towards danger. They keep us safe. They have our backs. Unfortunately, their service often comes at a very high price. And when most people think of danger to first responders, what they're thinking about is physical danger. But many may not know or may not be aware of the hidden and less obvious risks that first responders face. And doing what they do often takes a toll on their mental health. It takes a toll on their well-being. And these are incredibly stressful jobs, and first responders are often exposed to traumatic situations. And that's why first responders suffer from post-traumatic stress injuries at significantly higher rates than the general public does. Now, if we look between 2015 and 2019, there were 685 workers' compensation board claims for first responders related to post-traumatic stress injuries. And those claims cost more than $104 million. But the human and the, the social costs are much higher and they can't be calculated. A person with a, a post-traumatic stress injury endures tremendous mental anguish and horrible suffering. And many families, friends, and communities 
are robbed of the full person and the full participation in their lives. First responders often pay a very high price to have our backs. And that's why Alberta's government launched the Supporting Psychological Health in First Responders grant program. Now, this $1.5 million per year is a grant that uh, is available to nonprofit organizations providing supports for first responders living with or at risk for post-traumatic stress injuries and organizations or individuals who are doing research, applied research on post-traumatic stress injuries in first responders, such as three researchers with the U of A, Dr. Doug Goss, or Gro Gross, Dr. Suzette Bremo Phillips, and Dr. Vincent Agyampong. Now these three respected researchers are leading the way in developing programs and support to help our first responders improve their mental health. And I'll, I'll let Dr. Uh, Suzette Bremo Phillips, who I mentioned, explain her own research and how it's going to help our first responders address their mental health and ensure that they can return home safe and healthy each and every day. Because this is what it's really about, making sure that our heroes that show up to care for and support us as Albertans can return home to their families and their friends at the end of the day. And we promise to support these brave Albertans and to recognize their noble service. And I'm honored to keep that promise. So thank you very much. I'll now ask Suzette if you don't mind being able to come up here and give a few words. Talk about the amazing research you're doing. Thank you, President Flanagan, and also Minister Shandro, um, and your team at the Ministry of Labor and Immigration for making this funding opportunity possible. I have the privilege um, as an associate professor here in the Faculty of Rehabilitation Medicine at the University of Alberta of directing an initiative called HIMARC, the Heroes in Mind Advocacy and Research Consortium, which does research on behalf of, mini of um, military members, veterans, public safety personnel, and their families. We do a lot of work to be able to support the resilience building of members, to support and identify a, a number of different kinds of interventions that can support members when they struggle with post-traumatic stress injuries, post-traumatic um, post stress disorder, as well as more moral injury and a number of other challenges that they may face in, in the course of their service. We also do some research to help people transition out of service and into the civilian sector. Highmark is very proud to be able to be a bridge um, between the government of Alberta and a number of different um, organizations to be able to be a provincial hub for what we can pull together um, to bring the best of the best expertise um, for the sake of those who serve and continue to serve those who have served us in our communities. We're committed to improving the lives and well-being of those who serve and have served and collaborating with partners, organizations, the government of Alberta, other, other provincial and federal governments who share this common goal. Alberta Labor and Immigration's grant program supporting psychological health and first responders is an incredible opportunity and thank you for making it possible for us to be able to advance some research to be able to support those who serve us. As we've heard, we've all witnessed the critical role that first responders play in our communities and lives. We might be less aware of the incredible toll that serving our communities can have on their well-being and on their mental health. They're incredible people. They're incredible value-driven people who have given of themselves and continue to do that on a daily basis, moment to moment, to serve whatever comes in front of them. I've seen how the mental health challenges, such as post-traumatic stress injury and moral injury, can threaten to disrupt their lives, their families' lives, which we can't um, forget are the backbone and the, and the drivers behind the supports, the key supports behind many of our first responders. First responders have their passions, their interests, and they want to continue to serve. With this announcement, we together will seek ways to respond to the needs of first responders and better support those who are at risk of post-traumatic stress injuries. 
IMARC is honored to be leading currently one of the projects that has been funded by this grant call that looks at digital health delivery of trauma therapies. I'll let Dr. Jones speak to that a little bit more in a moment. But we, from the Highmark um, perspective, as a provincial hub, invite others who are partners with us and others who are yet to be partners to join forces in support of those who serve us. We look forward to supporting all of the successful teams who have been recipients of this award. Minister Shandro, on behalf of Highmark and the Faculty of Rehabilitation Medicine, my deepest thanks and appreciation for your support in this important work. We look forward to working with your ministry and with your colleagues and our other colleagues with the goal of supporting those who serve and have served. Dr. Jones, if I can call you up. Thank you, Dr. Bremo Phillips, for that introduction. And again, thank you, uh, Minister Shandro and your team for supporting our research so we can support those who are uh, supporting us, our public safety personnel. As uh, has been said, public safety personnel are at higher risk of uh, post-traumatic injuries, and those can include uh, things like burnout, depression, anxiety, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and moral injury or moral distress. Uh, one specific study that was funded through the first responders grant from the government of Alberta that we're currently working on regards the delivery of digital health interventions for those public safety personnel who have a, PT a PTSD or are affected by trauma. Uh, with COVID-19, obviously a lot of interventions uh, therapeutically had to be switched to online delivery. And we didn't quite know at the beginning of the pandemic how would this affect public safety personnel. And uh, our interventions, our modalities that we use for uh, mental health therapy is going to work for this population. Uh, and the good news is our preliminary results are showing that the delivery of uh, digital health interventions for trauma for public safety personnel are showing promise and are working just as well and in some cases maybe even a little bit better for some people than in-person delivery of therapy. So this is a study that we're going to continue working on going forward with this population. Uh, and we have one other study that we're working on specifically right now for public safety personnel, and that involves a workplace reintegration program. Uh, of course, because of a PTS PTSI, public safety personnel may have to take time off of work, and reintegrating into the workplace after this can be really challenging and something that they can use some support with. So we're specifically looking at a reintegration program developed by the Edmonton Police Services that has already been rolled out across the country and also in New Zealand as well to see if we can look at its effectiveness, eff efficacy, and uh, its safety. So that's something else that we're currently working on. Uh, I would just like to say again, thank you very much to the government of Alberta and Minister Shandro and your team for allowing us to uh, engage in this really important research so we can help uh, the public safety personnel in Alberta. So thank you, Dr. Bremo Phillips and Dr. Jones, for your important work to ensure that our first responders and their families can cope with the unique challenges and traumas they must face every day. And Minister Shandro, thank you. And the, thank you and the government of Alberta for your investment today to ensure this work and the work of others can continue. The COVID-19 pandemic has put a strain on the public health of millions. For some, the burden has been especially severe, and today's announcement will help ensure that first responders, the people who put their lives at risk every day, remain strong and resilient. These research grants build on decades of world-leading research here at the University of Alberta. So thank you again to the government of Alberta for being a vital partner as we navigate the recovery ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much for everyone to come out tonight, or this morning, sorry. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, please don't hesitate to contact uh, our office. Thank you and have a great day.